Tim, I am so happy to talk to you today because I have been very confused all week long about what the heck is happening with the Republican Party. So today, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy met with Donald Trump in Florida, and I'm like, why? Uh, they reportedly had a very good and cordial meeting and discussed Trump helping Republicans regain the majority in the House. But what does that say about the future of the Republican Party if they're going to meet with the former twice impeached president at his beach house? <laughs> hey, Zerlina, thanks for having me. I'm happy to try to clear this up a little bit. Uh, it's what the voters want. This is the thing. This is a bottom-up uh, problem within the Republican Party. The voters are demanding their reps and their senators stand beside the man that incited the insurrection that tried to steal the election. These voters, by 70% of the Republican base, uh, think that uh, the election was stolen, uh, and that Joe Biden's an illegitimate president, and that Donald Trump uh, uh, at his beach house in Mar-a-Lago is a president in exile. Uh, that might be insane. Uh, that might be totally uh, outside of anything even approaching reality, but that's what they think. And when you're dealing with voters that think that, then you have to do irrational things to appease them. And so that's why uh, Kevin McCarthy is down there sucking up to Donald Trump today. Uh, that's why uh, you know the, the little chatter that you heard from Mitch McConnell and a couple of other people about how this might be time to move forward in the, in the few days after the insurrection has calmed down. And, and frankly, I think those of us that were never Trumpers uh, who moved away from the party or during his time saw this clearly and saw that this was going to happen. You know, I was on MSNBC okay. with some liberals who were like, come on, this is your guy's moment to get rid of him. I was like, it's not going to happen. <laughs> this is what the voters want. I'm sorry. I wish I could give you a more optimistic story, but that's the state of affairs. I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying to be pop, pop, uh, optimistic and positive about it, but it is hard, to your point. And Tia, a reporter from one of our local NBC affiliates, went to one of Green's town halls and tried just to ask her a question. Just ask a question. And I want to play some of that interaction because I think Marjorie Taylor Greene is different um, than just a, you know, a member of Congress who has some more outside-of-the-box you know, ideas. She's very different. So let's take a look at that. The videos and the posts that I'm talking to my constituents. Declares that we are God declares us equal. You have been covering Green since her primary. What, if anything, surprises you about what you're seeing now? I'm really not surprised because this is the posture that Marjorie Taylor Green has taken from the beginning. She really doesn't grant media interviews. We tend to full of lot of what she's thinking from her social media. That's where she really projects her message, not only to the media, but to folks who follow her, constituents and things like that. Um, you know, it was probably more disheartening to see that the law enforcement was willing to threaten a member of the media with being arrested just for trying to ask the question. Yeah, this is America, isn't it? And, and in terms of how her constituents feel about her, um, do they not care about her vitriol? I mean, I understand that, you know, conservative voters, tradition, they vote for Republicans. You know, this is, this is something that they do um, election after election. But her vitriol, you know, saying you want to assassinate Democrats, that's, that's another level of, of vitriol. Do her constituents not care about that? Tia. So even though maybe some of the specifics weren't known, her in general, even before she was elected, and even when there were other Republican candidates on the ballot, we knew that Marjorie Taylor Greene had said things that were racist, xenophobic, anti-Semitic, QAnon supporting, um, spreading other conspiracies about mass shootings. And even then she won a, well, she was one of the top, the top candidate in the primary, then she had a runoff, but it was down to her and another Republican, and she won that. And she's had these town halls this week, and the audience is still very friendly. Um, I don't necessarily think that every Republican voter in the 14th district in Georgia agrees with her, but it's clear that a plurality of them not just agree with her, but they're supportive of her. They think she is doing the right thing by, um, as a member of Congress, continuing to say these things. Um, and continuing more, more importantly, continuing to defend and support President Trump. 
Oh, that's concerning. Uh, Tim, at this point, what does the Republican Party stand for? I remember back in 2016 thinking a lot about how the racism, or at least I thought, the racism would hurt them and that they would be like, no, we, we can't be racist. That's a negative. But in some ways, I feel like sitting here today, the racism, the xenophobia, the conspiratorial uh, theories actually seem to be a plus in some instances. And so beyond that, what are the issues that the Republican Party stands for right now? Uh, look, it's all it's negative partisanship all the way down, Zerlina. It's uh, what they stand for is whatever uh, the elites are against, whatever big tech is against, whatever black voters are against, whatever immigrants are against. It's all it's all it's all negative. There there is no positive agenda. I mean, imagine to yourself, what would the first agenda item have been for Donald Trump had he been reelected? He didn't have one. He, he didn't run on a policy agenda. And so, you know, uh, it is this cultural grievance that is driving it. And, and I think the best way to, to, to just demonstrate this is Tia's just talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene. There's nobody in her district right now. There are no mainstream Republicans saying we need to distance ourselves from her and focus on, you know, more conservative policies and small government. There's nothing Meanwhile, in Wyoming, Matt Gates flew to Wyoming today to, to have a rally against Liz Cheney because she impeached the president. That is what motivates voters uh, going against someone that was uh, uh, that was nasty to their tribe, that you know, that broke Omerta with the MAGA tribe. And so I just think that anecdote about how Liz Cheney, whatever you think about her on policy, you know, is in trouble in the party over her impeachment vote, while Marjorie Taylor Greene is in good standing in the party uh, tells you everything about the state of affairs. What's the long-term impact of that dynamic, though, Tim? Is the yeah. Republican Party, you know, ultimately going to break up into multiple different sects? Because it seems to me that long-term, going along with the person who supports violent conspiracy theories, you know, there we saw some of the, you know, the, the ends that could come about when, when you go along with that on January 6th. Look, I think that they look at this and they see the electoral map and the anti-democratic nature of the Electoral College and the Senate. And, and they think that if they double down and do even better with working class voters, mostly white working class voters, but if they can bring in Latino working class voters, they look at this map and think that Republicans, you know, can win narrow Electoral College victories and narrowly hold on to the Senate, um, even while, you know, there are millions and millions more Democrats in the country. I, I think that is the path that the Republican Party sees right now. They're not trying to expand the tent. They're trying to expand their advantage with these demographics uh, that have disproportionate impact in the Senate and the Electoral College. That, uh, that's the plan for now. Maybe it'll change eventually, but that's what they're going to double down on. No, that makes sense in terms of what I'm watching. That analysis seems to be, uh, it matches exactly what's happening. It's just frustrating uh, as someone who cares about democracy. Uh, Tia, you and your colleagues wrote today about the silence from Republicans on Congresswoman Green. Is there any expectation uh, that anyone in this Republican Party is going to stand up and condemn this behavior? I mean, you know, it looks like there may be a few, you know, that list of 10 Republicans who supported impeaching President, former President Trump, Republicans um, who are, have in the past been a little bit more willing to buck the party line, but by and large, it doesn't look like any, many Republicans so far, even what's interesting about Marjorie Taylor Greene is when she was in the runoffs against another Republican, there were several sitting members of Congress who said, this is not who we want in Washington. She will not be effective, don't vote for her. But once she won the runoff and it became clear that she was going to join their ranks of the Republican caucus, then those same lawmakers have been silent on her. And they said, you know, well, let's give her a chance. And now that more things are coming out and she continues to say things that many have uh, labeled as problematic, they've just been silent. They haven't, you know, not even that they said expel her or censor her, but they haven't even said, hey, colleague, you might want to type it down a little bit, you might want to make some friends. There hasn't even been that. Sounds familiar. Maybe they could just suggest, maybe don't bring your gun to Capitol Hill. I mean, just start there. Like, leave your peace in the car. I don't know. Uh, Tim Miller and Tia Mitchell, thank you so much for being here, for breaking all of that down, because 
This is a crazy story to have a member of Congress who believes in these conspiracy theories. And so we will have you back because I'm sure there will be updates to this story. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.